All right, so I'm going to start a few minutes early. It's 2.14. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going into a new section in our textbook. So um, first of all, I did put out a video for y'all to look at that will actually show you uh, what your ISM book should look like. And today I'm using my big one, my big computer, instead of my small one. It seems like it's found its uh, volume again, so I'm kind of excited about that. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this chapter, what we're going to be doing is we're going to start talking about the forces and law of motion. So in the first section, it gave you a really good scenario, and, this, and it's talking about what force is. And it gave you three different de uh, definitions of forces as a baseball player. So a baseball player could be, and it's in the, in the uh, context of the ball. Hey, Jordan, how are you? Um, I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm using my big computer today, so I'm kind of excited. <laughs> it's found its volume again, so I'm excited. So it was talking about the definition of motion, and it was talking about a baseball and how a baseball can define three forms of motion. So the first one, it talks about when a pitcher throws a ball. Another one's talking about the ball being hit by the bat. And then the third one, was a um, person throwing the ball. Three different types of motion. And then what it did is actually talked about some SI units of motion. The one thing I did put in my ISM book uh, was talking about what the units equaled. So I'm gonna turn my book to where I'm at. Didn't have a lot of information, but I do hope that you write this down. So one Newton, equals one kilogram times one meter per second squared. That's one of those things I will gonna have highlighted in my book. And the other ones that I have is one pound equals 4.448 Newtons. And one Newton equals 0 0.225 pounds. Now, we're not gonna be doing any math today. We're going to basically just talk about free body diagrams. So what they did in the book, the first thing that you want to do is that you want to read the problem. So if you're reading the problem, just like we've done before, except now what it's asking us to do is draw a free body diagram. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to read the problem completely out. The next thing you're going to sketch what's going on. Number three is you're going to find the object that you're looking at and I'm going to call that a system. It doesn't really say that in this textbook but I feel that a system is a good thing to look at. When you're talking about a system and we're going to kind of go over that and then the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to draw your vectors. And remember, a vector has direction and magnitude. And that is a major, major part of understanding what we're doing today. So they gave us the scenario. And the scenario they gave us was on page 123. And so if you look, we're going to be starting to draw force diagrams. Now, force diagrams are a little bit different than the free body, free body diagrams is what we're going to be doing. It's called what it is. And these free body diagrams have some unique things that you're going to do with them. So if you look in your textbook, the page 123, Area. It says, in early morning, a park ranger in a canoe is observing wildlife on a nearby shore. Earth's gravitational force is 760 newtons downward, and the gravitational force of the boat is 190 newtons downward. The water keeps the canoe afloat by exerting 90, 
950 newtons of force upward, draw a free body diagram. So like I said, the first thing that you want to do is read it. All right, I did it. The next thing, it talks about a sketching it. So we're talking about a canoe here, okay? So there's my canoe. And our canoe is on the water. The next step that you want to do is you want to define the system. So the system that I'm looking for in the way that I do is I put a dotted circle around what I'm looking at. So what I'm doing is I don't care about the water. I don't care about the air. I don't care about anything else except just the boat itself. Okay. So a lot of times what they'll do for the system, you're going to draw the vectors. This dot here is going to represent that boat. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at different types of forces that are acting on this boat. So what they did first is they actually showed a force. And I'm going to call this force gravity. It doesn't tell you that it's force gravity, but you want to label it force gravity because that is what's going on. Force gravity, and the way I want you to do this is you're going to tell me the force, what it's acting on, and I mean, and, and what's it's acting by, okay? So there's force gravity on the boat by the earth. F-G-B-E. Little different than the book has it, but I like it this way because this is the way we're going to be doing most of them anyway. Now, not only does the force gravity of the boat, it also tells us there is a force of the ranger that is inside the boat. So there's a guy in here. Well, the boat has its own gravitational pull because it weighs so much, but with the ranger on it, you have to show that also. So what they did is they just added another vector down to the bottom of it. And then they said, you know, there's a force gravity on the boat by the ranger. So with the, the boat and the ranger, they're combining them in separate vectors. And then the next thing that it says there is that we're actually going to have another force. And the force that we have is a normal force. Now, they don't specify as a normal force, but I want to make sure you understand something. Force gravity always has a normal force. So we're going to go up this way, and we're going to say force normal on the boat by the water, because the boat's sitting on the water. So if we look, then we want to think to ourselves, is the boat sinking? No. Is the boat floating like a, uh, is it hydroplaning off of the water? No, it's not. So since it's not, we want to indicate that these two vectors and this vector here are equal. What that means is, is the boat is sitting on the water and it is not going anywhere. It's not going forward. It's not going back. It's just sitting there. Now, if we had the boat moving, and the boat was moving because there was a motor behind there that made the boat go, then you would have a vector over here. That would be force applied on the boat by the motor. Now, it also talks about in the book about net force. So before, if we were just looking at the boat by itself where it was just sitting in the water, the net force would be zero because they're equaled out. But now I've used a force applied, which is the motor, and it's in that direction. So if I asked you for the net force of this picture, is it would be in that direction would be my net force. Does everybody understand so far? Yes. Thank you, Jim. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Hayden. Thank you. And so what I want to do now is I want to go to the practice problems that they asked for. 
So is everybody good with this? Can I erase it? And if not, I'll videotape it and you can pause it and draw it if you haven't drawn it. And that was just the practice problem that we were doing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use everything we know about a free body diagram and we're going to answer the problems that are in the book. So where am I? I am on page 124. It says, after a skydiver jumps from a plane, the only force initially acting on the diver is the Earth's gravitational attraction. So A says, draw a free body diagram of the skydiver when, he, he, when the diver initiately leaves the plane. So I'm going to say here, <laughs> here is my plane. Okay. Yeah. All right. And my skydiver has already fallen out of the plane. And at th this point, this is the where he's at. Airplane's going, he's jumped out, no parachute, nothing. Okay? So the first thing I want to do, remember, you want to identify a system. The system that I'm looking at is just him. The skydiver at this exact point right here. So based on what I know, I know I'm going to use a dot for a free body diagram. And remember, with this, I'm going to have a vector that shows me what's going on. I know that there is force gravity on the skydiver by the Earth. Now, at that moment, he has nothing else. But then, and so that's the answer of A. So then at B, it says... Draw a free body diagram of the skydiver at 10 seconds of falling. Well, I got to go back to the problem. It says, after 10 seconds of falling, air resistance on the diver will increase so that the magnitude of the diver is now equal in the magnitude of the Earth's gravitational force of the diver. It says, at that this time, the diver in a belly down position will fall at a constant speed of 190 kilometers per hour. There's no math involved in here. The only thing I'm gonna do now is now I'm looking at not him jumping out of the airplane, but I'm looking at as he is falling to the ground. Now I'm going to say, at this time, his parachute's out. Because I know we have some air resistance. For some air resistance, I'm gonna say parachute, okay? He's at a constant speed. His parachute just opened up, but I'm only going to be looking at just him. Now, if this was the scenario, I would still have force gravity on the skydiver by the Earth, but then I would have all these force tensions because remember, and we're going to talk about this in a few minutes, when something is hanging from a rope, there is a tension force, okay? Force tension on the skydiver by the parachute. That would be every single one of these. And I'm gonna say there's three strands. Now, the question is, is he falling or is he stopping or is he slowing down? I'm going to say the scenario is his parachute opens up and boom, he stops right where he's at, at that moment. Based on that information, that's going to tell me that this vector, these three vectors added together are equal. To be able to show they're equal is I draw a line here saying this one is equal to these three. Now let's say the scenario is where he's not even have his parachute open, but he's getting ready to pull his parachute, but his wind jacket is there having some air resistance. Based on that scenario, we will have force gravity on the skydiver by the earth again, but then I'm going to have a force but what kind of force is that? Air resistance. 
on the skydiver by the wind, by the whatever you want to call it. I'm going to say wind. Now, if he's still falling, but he's falling slower than he was before, that means this vector here should be shorter than that one. So if I look at that, I'm like, wait a minute, gravity doesn't have that much pull, but yep, it, this air resistance is a whole lot better. So that means his acceleration is slowed down and his speed is going slower than he did when he, when he began. So these force diagrams are very important. Questions so far? The next thing I would like to do is if you will open up the handout that I have attached to here, and it is a force diagram handout, and there are several pages, and the only thing I said you had to do was the first two pages. Please open that up. Now, the page that I'm looking at it should look like this right here. Does everybody have it? Yes, ma'am. Fantastic. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So let's look at this. They have a box. What does that box represent? It's for the, uh, it's for the diagram, but it's kind of like to draw force. It is where the system is located at. And oh. remember, in the middle of the system is a dot, meaning that's the center of the object you are diagramming. Okay? Now, they have these ones that come out. So we have force normal. We have force applied. We have force gravity, we have force friction, and remember we added one, right? Force tension that goes up. Now these are the, all the main ones. Now it depends on where you are and what's going on on where these are happening at. But if you're behind the object and you're pushing, force applied will always be that way. Force friction will always be pretty much this way, according to majority of the time, this is what ours look like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these scenarios and we're gonna draw free body diagrams. And like I said, I like the initials, like the FN, FT, FA, FG, FF, so that you don't have to draw it all out. And remember, when you're doing this, you're going to tell me what the force is on and by. And you may use just the first letter if you would like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a couple of these with you today, and then I'm gonna leave you alone. This is a, like you said, very first chapter, it's always easy, it's very first section, takes a couple of minutes. This will be great for Hayden because he's got a game this afternoon if it decides not to thunder. <coughs> so tell me what number you want to do and we'll do it together. Uh, just number one. Okay, cool. I'm trying new things, seeing if I can keep my mask up with me be able to break. I'm taking it off now because I'm practicing and there's not a soul in here, but me and you. So this is where we are. So the first one says a book is at rest at the tabletop, diagram the force acting on a book. So what we have is we have a book, right? It is on a table and it is just sitting there on the table. There's no hand pushing it. Nothing's going on. So our object is our system, is our book, is what we're looking at. So on our paper, we have a dot. So I know that there's two forces going on here. So Abby, what are the two forces going on here?
is A for Abby. I think that's her. All right, Hayden, what's the two forces involved here? Gravity. Yep. Force gravity, what's the other force? The table, I guess, I don't know. Okay, what did I tell you? The opposite of force gravity is always force normal, remember? Okay. Force normal. So, we have force gravity on the book by the Earth, force normal on the book by the table. Does everybody agree? Bailey, what else do I need to do to this diagram to make it right? Do you have to put the box around the dot? Nope, don't have to put the box around it. But how can I indicate that these, both these forces are equal? I'm not sure. Okay, we put a line stating that this vector and this vector is equal and they cancel out. Okay. And that's all you got to do. So this is the first scenario. So let me ask you a question. Hunter, God bless Jordan. Jordan, how can we change? Yes, ma'am. How can we change the diagram if, for example, I came in here with my hand and I started pushing the book in that direction? What would I add to this to make that scenario correct? When you have to show the force applied and the friction used to move a book. Mm -hmm. So, I have force applied on the book by the hand. Now, what's my net force in this one, Abby? Um, oh, cool. Okay, so let's look, Abby. This one is equal and this was equal, so they cancel each other out, right, baby? So my net force on this will be in the <coughs> right arrow, and that's it. That's all you got to do, because we aren't using numbers right now. Right now, we're just drawing vectors, and we're just indicating the size by just the length. So right now, we have a net force of that. How can I change this system if the point of I'm looking at the book is now the book is over here and falling down to the ground. So now there my system. There's not going to be a force normal. There's not going to be a force normal. Okay. Or a force applied because All right. it's just falling. So gravity is like the only force working on it. That's it. And my net force now is not to the right but it is going down. down. How easy is that? So let's do the one with the girl number two. The girl is suspended motionless from the ceiling by a rope. Diagram the force acting on the, on the girl as she holds the rope. So, it's long. So the answer would be force gravity, wouldn't it? Gravity force? Yeah. Force gravity on the book by the earth. By the earth. Yes, sir. And it would only be a vector going down, and that would be it. So now we have a girl. I don't know if she's a girl. Well, I guess I'll put a little dress on her. Okay. And so she's got these ropes that she's hanging from the ceiling. <clears throat> the system that I'm looking at is just the girl by itself. So I put a dot here. And how many vectors do I have this time, Jordan? Well, you would have force by gravity. Yep. Force normal. Okay. I believe there will be a force applied. Okay. And I think those are, will be off, I believe. Okay. So I'm going to say 
I have a force gravity on the earth. I mean, on the girl by the earth, but mm -hmm. I have force tension. Oh, that's right. And I have two of them because there's a rope involved. Now, since there's no rope, since there's a rope involved, there's no force normal. There's only force tension. So force tension on the girl by the rope. Force tension on the girl by the rope. Now, do you agree that these two vectors and this one here could equal? How could they equal? If they are both distributing the same amount of force onto the girl? Correct. So if you're if you're hanging at a play gym and you're using both arms, do you agree each arm's using half as much force than if you hung from one hand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I'm going to say she's hanging, so all three forces are equal. This one is equal to these two added together. So based on that, that your net force is going to be equal to zero. Does everybody understand what we're doing? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's turn to the back. Let's try a hard one. Let's try number nine. So number nine says that a car is uh, parked on a slope street. So I have a slope. I have my car. My car is parked on a slope street. Now, it's showing me this with my dot, which we're looking at the car, that's our system. But let's think of the vectors that we have. So Abby, what's one of the vectors that we have for this car that you know of? Abby? Good answer. Force, gravity. But I want you to look. My force, gravity is going to go straight down from where the car is. Right? Even though they're on the slope. Force, gravity on the car by the earth. What other things could we have that we would include in this diagram? Would the parking brake? have anything to do with it since it's on a slope street normally people use their parking brake so yep. the car doesn't roll so if i'm doing that i have force applied on the car by the parking brake what other force do i have If the table applies force to the board, would the road apply force to the car? There's no rope here? Road. Oh, the road. Well, if it's seen on the road, what kind of force would that be? Friction. Friction would be, uh -huh. friction would be uh, on the brakes. So there will be some small friction on the brakes. I agree with you, Hayden. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to look at the one that goes up here. There is a vector that goes here. Force normal. Force normal. Force normal on the car by the road. There's your road one. Now, would there also be tension? No tension. The only time that we would have tension is if there was a rope connected to it. And there's no rope connected. So, like if another car was towing this car, that would be? Yes. The tension? Yes. But remember, if we had another car up here, like you said, and it was towing it, then we would actually even have another 
uh, force tension on the car by car A. Because then we would say this is A and this is B. So then that way we would know what the difference of that was. But you're exactly right. If they were pulling it, yes. But they're not on this one. Now, it stopped, right? It's not going anywhere. I'm going to tell you, I know this one and this one would cancel out, but there has to be something else that's going this way that would cancel these two out to make it stay. What would be the other vector that would have to go down here because I would have to have these two cancel out for them to be, for it to be stopped. What other force could it be? Applied maybe. Well, we have force applied on the car by the parking brake, but would it go that way and that way? Yes, it would. Listen, the parking brake does not let it go forward and it doesn't go back. And did you see what I did? I put one line up here and two lines here saying these two vectors are canceled out. These two vectors are canceled out. So my force net is going to equal zero. Questions? You're going to see these force diagrams for the rest of the year. And you will need to know when you're talking about these force diagram or free body diagrams, you'll be drawing them in every, every situation you'll be doing in this book for the rest of the year. So you need to make sure you understand this is a system, is the object that we're looking at. When we go here, we had to draw our line like this instead of straight because he was parked on a hill. The dot represents the object of our system, and then we have to look at all the forces that belong to it. Questions? I want to make sure that you pay close attention tomorrow when you read section two, when we get into Newton's laws, which we're going to start Newton's law tomorrow, you will actually see from now on, you will notice there is a free body diagram for everything that you do for the rest of the year. And you need to make sure you understand what a system is, normal force, gravitational force, and what the other forces are. And listen, if you have to write down the word and it doesn't fall into the criteria of the ones that we've gone over so far, we will add to our vocabulary. Is everybody done with their tests? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma and I turned it in online, but I didn't see anywhere to like post pictures on Google Classroom. I put it in uh, this morning. Okay. And it should be there. Can you look real quick, Bailey, and make sure it would be posted from last Friday after Friday's question of the day? Can you make sure it's there now? Because I thought I put it, but, you know, Miss Sloan sometimes don't quite do what she thinks she's doing. It's there. I did it just to include view more. I know. Isn't it killing you? It's killing me. The view more thing is killing me. So what I would like you to do on a Wednesday I would like you to bring me your paper copy of your test with you. Now, the question of the day was asking you, is your ISM book ready? Okay, so do you think that we can do an ISM book check on Wednesday or do you feel like you need it on Thursday? My book is bamboozled, like it's all over. Well, the reason why yours is because you were in one class and you transferred to another one. So don't worry, Hayden. I'm going to take that into consideration. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. But I made the video uh, yesterday just so you can see what mine looks like and how my notes are labeled, how I've highlighted things. 
this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, do you have at least one page on your period on your table contents? Because I'm on my second page, I think, as of today. Let me see. Yeah, see, because that's my first page. And guess what? I, I'm going to start over here today because I haven't wrote today's yet. Do you have your title for every page and does it have a number? I mean, I don't think maybe your notes are going to be as much as mine. And I understand I kind of just like write everything. And as you could tell by looking at it, uh, it looks for me, for me, for reference, because you know, hopefully when we get back to the scenario of when we're going to be here at school and be in class, you can physically take these tests in class. And that's where the ISM book is going to be like so important because now you know what's important and what's not based on the three tests you've taken so far. Um, I did start writing a little bit more, di uh, more vocabulary this time so that I could be ready. So if I have vocabulary words next time, I'll be able to do that. So tell me if you have any questions about anything before I let you go, because I'm not keeping you forever. All good. Fantastic. Okay, well, I'm going to do some grading. Um, I will not have your test graded today, probably, because since I – just put up the um, snapshot for that. But was everybody able to get online and do it online also? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yes, ma yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, listen, very easy day today. Free body diagrams. We're going to start with Newton's first law tomorrow. And then we're going to go through all their laws. I think it's going to, I think this is going to be an easy chapter for you. Hooray. And um, I will see you again tomorrow then. All righty. All righty. I'll see you all tomorrow. Y'all have a good day. And uh, go Trojans. <laughs>